This is without a doubt the coolest head unit I've ever seen because for one, it allows you to retain your factory display. So all your factory settings, all the things that you want to account for are still there. So like for me, I have my Xbox hooked up to my Sync 2 unit. You have your normal Bluetooth, you have your AC controls. All that is independent of the new functions of the screen. But with the new screen, you also have CarPlay. You can download TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. You can even play games on this thing. But the biggest thing is that this unit is relatively plug and play. For how large the screen is, you don't need to cut into your dash or anything. And it really gives the interior a nice modern look that for a car this old, I'm really happy with this. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Got a very highly requested video for you all today because today we're gonna be installing the Tesla screen from Phoenix Automotive. Now in my opinion, this is the best aftermarket head unit you can get for your Fusion. It's plug and play, it fits in your factory dash with no cutting required, and of course it looks awesome and really modernizes the interior. I've been so excited to get my hands on this thing and with the new look for the interior, I think it's gonna set everything off perfectly. And personally, I always get really excited when a shop has their own tape, lets me know that there's that little bit extra attention to detail. And you can see here it says Fusion Sync 2 Auto, which means I have Sync 2 in my Fusion and then it is Auto AC. And it has been a long time coming, so I definitely want to share this first reveal with you guys. I have not opened this box yet, so let's see what we got. And there she is. So obviously, first off, you're going to have the screen. It is massive. It is 13.6 inches. And then you flip it around, you'll see all the ports, which is basically where all the plugs go. Then we have this collection of wires and plugs, which I'm not very sure of the specifics of each of them, but uh, majority of the stuff is gonna be in the vehicle already. So a head unit of this size isn't just for looks, it's also gonna be very useful because of course it's gonna take over the radio controls, but it's also gonna take over the AC controls. But on top of that, being an aftermarket head unit, you get to utilize a lot more of it. So you get to use the software to download apps, surf the internet, play games, car play. So you keep all the factory aspects of your dash, but add a whole lot more. I disconnected the battery just for the sake of feasibility, but it is not necessary. Now, what we're gonna be doing is removing the trim around the unit, and if you have a Spotify car thing, you might wanna move this thing as well. You're gonna start with this piece. It's just a few clips. It's really nothing crazy. Definitely helps if you have a pride tool, but if you don't have one of these, a flathead screwdriver will also do the trick. These things are honestly really easy to remove. The next up, you will notice that this unit is actually held in position by four seven millimeter bolts. You have one right there, one in there, then two more mirrored on the other side. Now the easiest way to remove them because they are a little bit deeper is to just get a seven millimeter socket, attach it to a drill and just remove them like that. And once you've got this loose, you can come here to the back take note of those two plugs and just unplug them. It's not gonna be anything super difficult. If you notice, there's these little sections where you push, you push that and pull back and it should come out. This one for the left side, as you can see, it has that little hook right there. You just push down on this and you should be able to wiggle it out. And this one on the right side, you just press this down and same thing, just wiggle it out. So here you can see the two pieces together. This is the old housing for the unit, the screen right here. You got the AC and the radio controls here as well. And if you notice here on the side, this is actually the mounting points. It's actually mirrored on the new screen. Next up, there are four more bolts holding up the eight inch screen. You can see two right there, two more right there. And those are also seven millimeters. We should be able to just take this off now. Oh, yep. Same thing, you have a couple plugs right here. There we go. So this one's the same, you basically just push down right here at the top. This one, however, has this gray section, so all you need to do is actually unhook it so that you can actually slide it out, and once you slide it out, it comes out as well. Now that we have everything laid out, we can go ahead and get a little bit more perspective on these two units. So for the housing, you can see we have this port here and this one right here. They're actually mirrored right here on the new screen. Where we do have some difference though is this is actually the Sync 2 port and this unit does not actually have that. It looks like what we're gonna need to do is actually remove this old module on the factory agent screen and actually move it to the new unit. If that sounds a little complex, don't worry, I'll walk you guys through it. Starting off with the factory screen, we have four screws here in these little holes. They're just Phillips head screws, nothing crazy about them. And this comes off just like that. You'll notice right there we have that little plug, whatever you really wanna call it, I don't really know what it is. And the new screen has the exact same one right there. 
Now I believe this is the correct orientation. I unscrewed it like this, but looking at the screen, it was upside down. And uh, so we'll basically have these little ridges going upwards. And as you can see, the actual imprinted uh, lettering is actually correct. It's just a sticker that's upside down, but not really pressed about that. And then we can just screw it into place. We have two holes here, and we only have this one right here. This one's just subtly off. I'm not going super tight on these because it is a pin connection, so we don't want to pull it too hard one direction. Before we actually get to the plugs and hooking everything up, we need to swap the AC board from the old unit to the new unit. Now, it sounds more complex than it is. It's basically just a collection of screws, as you can see here. And the bit you're going to need is a T8. So it's a little small, but um, shouldn't be too complex. As you can see here, it has these two little ports at the bottom that do not have pins in them. So we're actually gonna be reusing our old AC board so everything can read very easily. We've got a handful of very, very small screws here. We've got eight in total, uh, one in each corner, which is four, two here on this port, and two here on this port. And you don't actually need to remove these around the port. These are gonna help you line everything up. But whenever you have the other ones done, this actually just comes right off real easily. And you can see it's gonna line up on that. But since I'm doing this with one hand right now, just gonna see if we can line it up a little bit more casually. There are a bunch of screw holes, which make it a lot easier. I'm gonna place this. And once we've got everything lined up, we can just redo these four screws and plug everything back up. Now these wires are just for some extra hookups if you wanna do them, so we don't need to worry about them right now. This one right here with this little hook section is connecting to right here. This white one is connecting to right here, and this one is connecting to the car. This is another one of these supplied wires. This one says it's for USB connections, and you can see it has this little plug right here. And that just goes right there. I believe this will also be functional for CarPlay. Now we can route these in some other direction. Now aside from that, there's three more ports. There's this one right here that actually utilizes this little harness right here. This is basically for like other stuff you wanna add. If you wanna add like other cameras, uh, media players and whatnot. This we're gonna be working on at another date, but we're gonna be adding some cool stuff later down the road. So we're gonna hold on to this, but that's basically what it's for. As you can see, it's a lot of RCA ports. This right here is an HDMI port, so I believe you'd be able to actually utilize it, you know, as an actual video player, just straight up. And then this little twist on section right here, they give you this connection. This is actually a GPS connection, and the cool thing is your car is still gonna utilize its factory navigation setup, but if you wanna use apps that are on the screen specifically, this is what it will use. I was able to get my hands on the necessary bracket. Uh, they did send this a little bit later. And uh, as you can see, it's just gonna recess the CD player aspect, but it's a pretty simple piece. It's definitely worth noting that all you need to do is loosen the CD player section. You actually don't need to unplug anything. Uh, it's just a couple screws on the sides. And so this little bracket right here is what we're gonna be replacing. We're gonna be replacing it with this one right here. This one is a little bit longer, so it's gonna make this go a little bit further into the dash to give clearance for the new screen. Here's a little comparison between the two. So the bottom one is the factory one and the top one is the new one. By the way, these bracket screws are really small, so try not to drop them. Again, just for some comparison. And the last little thing, there are these spacers that are screwed in right here. These actually land on a little bit of a track and basically stop it from going back. Uh, it's just a little screw on the inside, so you're actually gonna take those off, just unscrew it, so it can actually sit flush. Just a little Phillips head will do the trick. Okay, we got something. Android. So the connection was just a little loose and I'm assuming that's why I didn't want to connect right off the bat. But as you can see here, this is actually the Sync 2 interface, which uh, I was not expecting that. Honestly, I've seen a bunch of these units like in use, but I haven't really seen it specifically. It took a little bit of back and forth, but the unit is installed and it is working perfectly. Give me a few weeks and I can give you guys a really in-depth review on this unit, but I was able to mess with it this past weekend, so let me walk you through it. I did leave the screen protector on just so I could take it off on camera, so here we go.
Definitely looks a lot cleaner now. The one thing that I definitely want to point out is that this unit is a little bit different than the other units I've seen online uh, through their promotional stuff and just with other units that people have installed. And the main reason is up here in the top right corner, you'll see it says console, which is the screen we're on right now. That's actually the factory sync to screen. So I was under the impression that basically having a new unit, it would actually just kind of get rid of the sync to aspects, but all of this is still retained, which is really, really cool because all of it still functions exactly as it should. So say you want to do normal climate controls, all those same settings still come up same thing with the entertainment and of course for me that means a lot because coming down here we still have the AV in which is the RCA ports in the center console so yes you can still play you know Xbox games or whatever in here like the Xbox I have hooked up so being able to do that independently of the new functions of the screen I think is so cool because it retains all that factory information that factory equipment and that just makes it a little bit more OEM plus if you will even though this is obviously not original equipment it gives it a really really nice feel now there are a few things I need to account for this right here is not a fusion uh, it's supposed to be a fusion but over here on the left we have a tack and over here on the right we have a speedometer um, and then down here at the bottom we have our AC controls now obviously you'll see that it is obstructed if you have a normal shifter if you have the dial shifter it's probably not gonna be obstructed however whenever you put it in gear You'll notice the obstruction's actually gone and you can mess with it however you need to. And so down here, this is where the AC controls stay permanently. So whatever you're doing on your screen down here will always be the same, which is definitely really nice. Uh, definitely need to swap this out for a Fusion. And uh, if you want more air, obviously you can just press the button right here. You have your dual AC on, so it's actually blowing cold or hot, as well as the temperatures. One thing I definitely want to point out that I've seen a lot of questions on are the heated seats. Uh, so this is actually just where it is right here. We have the heated seat and the cooled seat. So I did upgrade to cooled seats. Granted, I didn't do any of the wiring yet because I'm not 100% set on how to do it. Uh, so that's not hooked up yet, but once it is, it's just basically that little section right there of the screen. But you can tap right here. And there's your heated seats and when you press anything down here you get this little drop down screen that's more specific AC controls uh, basically just gives you options that are a lot easier to access I will admit I really don't use any of the AC controls here um, I never really did I've always done the AC controls in the steering wheel um, just because that's honestly been the easiest way to go about it for me now where this thing really stands out is the added features so carplay and then yes you can play games on this thing so we will start off with carplay because that's going to be a little bit more of the daily use aspect of this unit so you go up here to apps you tap that on your left you're going to have your system apps and then on the right you're going to have your downloaded apps so the way that it advertises carplay is that it is already built in but it's basically a downloaded app. It's like a third party app that functions as CarPlay. So they are all gonna have CarPlay. And then to connect your phone, if you remember, there's a few ports behind the actual unit. One of those is for USB connections. So you basically plug in the USB connection plug, whatever you wanna call it. And then from there, you plug your phone connection to USB 2. You press Z Link right here. It's waiting for a connection because my phone is not plugged in yet. So I plug in my phone, it connects. You give it a sec and there is your carplay screen so the thing that i absolutely love is it utilizes the full aspect ratio of the screen so rather than having it be where it's basically like sectioned off to the upper half it makes the mini map this full upper section then the two little side sections are moved down here to the bottom so you have your search or directions whenever you're actually going somewhere then you have your music your podcast whatever you're listening to i really love the utilization of all this space because it makes it a lot easier to navigate this entire interface and on top of that say you have somebody in the passenger seat that is being dj they have this big section right here that they can very easily account for because at least in the experiences that i've had whenever you're doing this screen like this little bit of everything screen i don't really know what the term for it is uh usually they go into whatever app it is to actually change the music you really don't need to do that here you can just you know very easily press that especially perspective wise no it's not really the full-on intent it's more just kind of using the space but just an actual practical use i found it to be a very very big upside and then really cool obviously you can click these so you click the map section and it takes up the entirety of your screen minus the ac control section down there I really, really do like that because it makes it so much more useful in the fact that you can actually see miles and miles and miles down the road. And the same is true for the other apps. I really, really love this screen because to me, this just looks like a giant iPhone. Like, I will give you guys a little bit of comparison. It basically just looks like just, you know, not necessarily mirrored screens, but adjacent mirrored screens uh, just because it is you know a vertical screen so it's basically the orientation of an iphone and you can change the backgrounds and everything which i definitely did i went with this theme because you know the seats are red and there's blue lights so i figured it would match a little bit more um, and then obviously you have a ton of apps that you can actually go through 
uh, we have the Domino's app, which I'm assuming you can order a pizza, but I do not have it signed in. Uh, and it's just really, really cool to use. Now, I do want to admit, I don't use CarPlay to the fullest extent because all I ever really use CarPlay for are directions and music. If I got those two things, I am driving happy. And here's a little look at the Spotify screen. As you can tell, I listen to a lot of football stuff. And if you're using Spotify as the main screen, if you're listening to anything, it does take up the entirety of the screen, but in my opinion, you don't really need that for music or podcasts. It's more just kind of like a little side thing. And however you want to set it up, there's definitely going to be that wow factor just from this screen right here, because this looks really cool. And it does look relatively factory. You know, a lot of vehicles nowadays have massive screens. Now, I'm not super familiar with the realm of new cars, but my best friend does have a new Crosstrek with a factory large screen. And it's actually a very similar orientation, just how it lays out. So being able to get that out of a 10 year old Ford Fusion, I don't think it gets much better than that. All right, now for the really fun apps. So I downloaded a few. Uh, you can see I have Flip Dunk, which is probably one of my favorite games. I have Instagram, uh, Max, Paramount Plus, uh, I have TikTok, and Prime Video. Uh, so obviously you're gonna need an internet connection, which uh, you're gonna go to settings. You're going to go to more settings right here. You're gonna go to network and internet. And then I'm using my phone as a hotspot, which is just why it's my name right there. Uh, but that's basically how easy it is. You can actually just do that. And one thing is you're going to want to make sure it's set to maximize compatibility because mine was not coming up before I turned that on. Uh, but after turning it on, it came up right away. And you can basically use this thing as just like a normal tablet would be used. And so you can scroll, you know, just like normal, which is basically all that TikTok really is. Just kind of endless scrolling, which we love. Uh, you go over here to apps and you can basically see everything else. And yes, you can play games on this thing, which uh, this is probably one of my go-to games if I want to test anything out because this is just a very simple game, but a very fun game. It's called Flip Dunk. The entire premise is basically you hold the screen to flip, you let go, you stop flipping, and all you're doing is trying to dunk the ball in the basket. And it's just your proof right here that you can play games. However, this level might be a little bit hard. From what I remember, my girlfriend couldn't pass it. So it might be on me to pass it. Uh, nope, just short. Okay, this level's a little harder than I remember it. But still, you can play games on this thing. Uh, and then the biggest thing that I've noticed about this unit, it's probably the coolest in my opinion, YouTube. So we all know YouTube, we love YouTube. And uh, whenever you open it up, it's basically just going to be a normal you know, YouTube app. Let's just click this video because it's one of the first ones that come up. YouTube does have a mini player which you can scroll down and it does that. But the cool thing, it will keep the mini player going while you're doing other stuff. So say you wanna do car play and watch the video format of a podcast, it is entirely doable. It will still play as a mini player even on CarPlay. To my understanding, it does it on all the apps as long as it is basically one of the apps right here and not like the console section. And you can move it around to the corners. But uh, obviously, big disclaimer, this doesn't have the same restrictions that, you know, vehicles that have head units like this coming out of the factory have. Obviously, those restrictions are there in place for a reason. This is much more if you're parked, and you're not actually going to be moving, and you just want to put something on the screen, or you want to share the screen with somebody else. This is definitely the best way to do it. Um, just, yeah, be smart. Don't drive and watch videos because that is dangerous. So those are some of the first impressions of the unit. I really like it. I'm really happy with how it came out. I will have a video a little bit later down the road where I can get a little bit more of an in-depth review on this thing where I get a little bit more understanding of how it works and some of the cool features that it has as well as how to adjust some of the settings like change out the photos and everything. Uh, I also will have another video kind of giving you guys a little bit of a sum up of how to fix some of the issues that you might come into because that's basically what happened with me. But other than that, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I will see you in the next one.